Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is going to be part 20 of the tutorial series. In our last video, we got um, a spatial grid going so that we can optimize our collision checks by um, only showing or only checking collision on candidates that are within the same grid squares that we are. So, one thing I do want to point out I forgot to add a simple check in our retrieve function. Uh, this if if um, e is not equal to the entity making the check, we have to also say and if entities dot index of and then uh, we're going to put e is not equal or sorry is equal equal to negative one. So what uh, the index of function does is it just checks to see if that an instance of the or reference to the entity e uh, exists in the array and if it does it'll give an a index from zero to whatever um, whatever index it is in the array else it will return negative one meaning that it doesn't exist in the array so we're just going to make sure it doesn't already exist and if it doesn't already exist we'll push it into our entities array so that being said it doesn't really make a huge difference now but it will when you have tons of entities on the screen so funny little thing is eventually we're actually going to remove any static entities um, from our collision our, our collision checks anyways um, because the way that I'm about to do things in the future uh, with the with the game controls that I'm deciding to go with uh, we won't ever collide with a static entity anyways so there's no need to do collision checks but we can still do collision checks on other entities such as other players so we'll need this spatial grid for those as well um, and this will come in real handy at that point so what we're going to do now I'm going to make it so that we don't center our camera on the entity anymore what we're gonna do is we're gonna move around the camera uh, with the mouse so we're gonna basically take it let you middle click and when you hold down and drag it will move the camera around uh, or the X and Y offsets and this will be uh, better for the feel that I'm wanting to go with this game so that's what we're gonna get started so the first thing that we need to do is get a uh, get a mouse manager going just like we have a key manager we're gonna to want to do the same thing but with the mouse so let's get started by adding the mouse manager so we're creating a new JavaScript document. Call it Mouse Manager, and this is going to be defined. We're only going to take in class for this, <coughs> and pass class through. All right, so we're going to need a few variables, some private variables. One's going to be an array uh, of buttons. The others are handler. We're going to pass in mouse, or we'll have mouse and canvas. And you'll see what these do uh, once we get started. So we will define our class right here as class.extend and get our constructor set up. It's going to take a handler and we will then set the handler handler is equal to handler next we're going to set mouse as a blank object here and we're also going to do buttons as a blank array and we will have to create a few a function in our uh, handler and in our um, display class I believe so this will be canvas and we're going to set it equal to handler dot get display dot get canvas all right so what we can do now is we can open up our handler we can add this so we'll add it right below here we'll say get display and that'll be a function and it will say game re will return game dot get display now we have to also create this just like we did with uh, 
the other attributes. So in our game class, it's just like we have get key manager. We're gonna now create get display. We're gonna return display. Now we'll have access to display. The other thing we wanna do now is go into our display and add uh, get canvas. This will be a function that returns canvas. So the other thing that we need now is to actually set canvas, which uh, we'll just say right here, just to be just to be easy or quicker, we'll just say uh, canvas is equal to document. Oh, let's just copy this. And we can just change this to canvas here. So now we are setting canvas in the create display uh, function here. So now when we return canvas, we will actually get something. So if we come here, we've got we return display, and then we return uh, we, we return the display as well through our handler. We do need commas. All right. So again, we've we've got we're setting our canvas here, and we're creating the get canvas function in our display. Then our we're getting the get display function. We're adding that to our game and uh, also to our handler. So just the same way we do with the get game, game camera and the key manager. So we'll be also adding get mouse manager to this as well. So let's go back into our mouse manager. Now that we actually have access to these functions, we uh, have set those. Next thing that we're going to do is create some uh, event listeners. So we're going to say document dot body dot add event listener we're gonna listen for the mouse down event and we're gonna create a function called start drag so we'll create that function momentarily document dot body dot add event listener oops this one's gonna be mouse up Mouse up, and we're just going to do a function because this will be quick. Uh, it doesn't really require a whole another line or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to set buttons at the position of E dot button. So what happens when you click a mouse button? Uh, there's an E dot button method which will return zero, one, two, depending on which button you clicked on the mouse. So, all right, and we're going to set that to false. So on mouse up, we're going to set the uh, the index of whatever the button click was to false there. And now we also have another uh, event listener to do, and this is for the context menu. So whenever you right click. Um, usually what happens is it will bring up a right-click menu. Um, we're going to disable that so that we we don't have to worry about if we click the right bo mouse button, we don't want to bring up a context menu. Um, we want instead to do whatever we program. So to do that, we just say e.prevent prevent default, like so. And now whenever we right click, it's not going to pop up that menu. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'll come down here and I'll write the uh, the function for that drag. So we will, oh, and I believe we want, yeah, we want it just like this. So we'll say var and we'll just say function start drag <clears throat> and it's going to pass in e 
we'll say yeah e and we can do the same thing so we're going to create a variable up here called btn for button and we'll do e dot prevent default and we'll set buttons at position e dot button equal to true so we'll set it equal to true and then that'll stay true until we release the mouse where it gets set turned to false so that's important the next thing that we're going to do is um, is going to be specifically for the click event so when we click we're just going to capture which button um, was clicked and pass it through to a general click function that's going to be similar to like our tick and render it'll pass it'll be passed through to any entities that want to take advantage of our click function so to do that what I'm going to do is create a switch we're going to capture whatever button is and in case it's zero in case of zero we're going to set btn equal to left so we'll know that it is the left button and in case of one we will set btn equal to middle and in case of two we will set btn equal to right so what this does is it's going to create uh, it's going to give us a <clears throat> a left right or left middle right um, option that we can pass through so like a variable we can pass through to the click and then anybody who wants or any entities or classes that want to take advantage of the button click they can uh, check to see which button was actually clicked and then run whatever they need so we're going to create a new function in the handler and it's going to be handler dot click and we're going to pass in btn so if we go into our handler we are going to have click and that's going to be a function that captures btn or that passes in btn and then what it does is it's going to run the game dot click function so we haven't created this but we are going to now so we go into game and we're gonna come down to the bottom here and we're gonna add click passing in BTN and now oops we want to make this a function click is a function and then this will uh, we will check if state dot get state is not equal to null very similar you remember we did this before and then we're going to say state dot get state dot click passing in btn so now we're just passing this along so now we can go into our state and let's add we can come into state here and add a function click we just need to have the function there um, <clears throat> one thing that you can do if you want to make sure that you got the right functions in st uh, when you're creating like an abstract class you can actually throw an error and say like uh, uh, every state needs a tick and now if you forget in one of your states to add your tick or render every state needs a render and the same thing with click so what this is going to do is if you decide to create a new state and you just forget uh, to add one of these required functions it will instead of doing something it will just throw an error like this so now if we go into our game state we can add click btn and this will go into a uh, even further so we can say this dot world dot click passing in btn 
And we can just go down the chain. So I'm going to go down the chain at least to world. And we will go under our render, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, we'll go under our render. And we will say click as a function passing BTN. And from here, we can do we can keep going. So we'll say this dot entity manager dot click passing BTN in. And now if we go into our entity manager. We can add click, and that's a function that grabs BTN. And then we can loop through our entities like so and run click. Passing BTN. So all of our entities now would need a click function. So we can do the same thing here. Click function. Now this is in the base entity class. Passes BTN. Uh, we don't really need to pass it in if we. Then we can just say throw entities must have a click function so now any entity that we create must have a click function so we can go into like static entities now and we can just put in our click function and make it do nothing so we'll say click function now that will just make sure we don't throw an error uh, for our trees it's going to have a click function but it's just not going to do anything and for our player, so we can go into player and we can add a click. So click function. We will pass in BTN because we'll be doing something with it. And now let's make sure I've put my commas where needed. Oh, don't need that there. Entity, I forgot a comma probably the same thing here so make sure you throw your commas in so as of right now we've in our mouse manager we created that handler dot click and we've passed it all the way down the chain all the way to our entities same thing same way we do with our render and tick now if any entities want to take advantage of the mouse click and you know do something based on which button was clicked um, they can do that even the world can do it and you'll see w how this works once we uh, once we get the world programmed. So now let's get back to adding um, some more functionality. We have one more function to create. And this is going to be get position. So I will come up here and we'll say document dot add event oh, document dot body dot add event listener. This is going to be mouse move and we're going to run get position because this will take uh, this will be a few lines of code so let's just create that function now so we'll say function get position passing in e or event we can we can say e all right we're going to create few variables one is X it's gonna be e dot X Y is e dot Y and then we're going to uh, we're going to make sure that we take into consideration the offset of the uh, canvas so X is going to minus equal canvas dot offset left and Y is going to be, sub be subtracted the canvas dot offset top so now what that's doing is it's going to make sure 
when we uh, have our mouse positions, we are starting at the top left of the canvas, not the top left of the document. Finally, what we can do is set mouse.x equal to x and mouse.y equal to y. So if we no, we also need to make sure, just to come down here, return mouse manager. So if we come up underneath the constructor, we can add, we can add the, uh, the get mouse position. So get mouse position. And this is a function and it will just return mouse, which will have our X and Y positions. Now, we may want to, instead of returning mouse as an instance of the object, um, we can just return mouse, return it like this, mouse.x and Y will be mouse.y. Now, this is so that we're not passing an instance of the mouse uh, object which will always be changing anytime we move this way we're going to basically get a snapshot of wherever the mouse was when we called that function um, and you'll see how that plays uh, out in the future so I'm gonna come above this there's one thing this is gonna have and we're gonna have a tick function and we're going to do the same thing with this tick that we did in the uh, key listener or the key manager and we're gonna say this dot left is equal to button buttons zero because that's where the zero uh, <clears throat> that's where the uh, that's what button the left is it'll be in the index of zero so it'll either have true or false this dot middle is equal to buttons one and this dot right is equal to buttons two. So we'll be able to uh, just run this tick and update the the uh, these variables and at any time we can actually say mouse manager dot uh, left middle or right to see um, if it's currently being held or not. All right so this is it in a nutshell uh, the next thing that we can do is start using this to move around the screen. So I will first thing take the line out of the tick that centers the camera on the entity. And let's make sure we don't have any errors. Uh, which we shouldn't because we haven't even included it. So the camera is not following him anymore. All right. Now let's add, let's add the mouse manager to our app.js. Mouse manager. That's an app slash classes slash inputs input slash mouse manager. And let's go into our game and create an instance of this. So I will just say right after the key manager, we'll load in mouse manager. Now we have access to it, and I will set a variable for it up here. Mouse manager. So I'm also going to take this key manager. We're going to throw this down in our initialize or our niche right here. So we'll put it under our display. And 
and right underneath that we'll set mouse manager equal to a new mouse manager remember this takes handler or handler so our mouse manager does need handler it works a little bit differently than the key manager and I'm also going to set handler above all of this so we will come above it and put the handler there that shouldn't make much of a difference it uh, it just we have to set handler before we can pass it through here all right and then we will need a few more functions we have our click we want to get we want to create a uh, get mouse position you know what we don't want to do that um, we can get the mouse position we just need to have a get mouse manager so I'll put that right below the key manager we'll say get mouse manager manager like so and that will return mouse manager so now we can call get mouse manager and then call get position as well uh, what did I do wrong here There's an error, but I'm not sure where this error would be. <laughs> Let's see. Unexpected string line 12. Eh, forgot a comma. There we go. So everything's still working. That's a good sign. Well, we can check. We can go into world, and we can come under here, and we can say if btn equals left, we can alert you clicked left button so let's see what happens bam you click the left button so now we have access to our click events and if it's the left button because if I hit a right or the middle button nothing happens only when I click the left button we are off to a great start so let's see what can I do let's create the drag functionality so uh, we will get mouse input let's see let's get that started all right so we're going to create a function and it's going to be called get mouse input so we will come underneath here at the very bottom and we'll say get mouse input And what we'll do is we'll set position equal to this dot handler dot get mouse manager dot get mouse position. So now we're getting the, the position there. And we're going to set this dot start drag. So we're going to create a new function called or a new uh, variable called start drag and it's going to contain uh, it's going to be set to a new object and it's going to take position oh that is in our click so I'm going to take 
Where, yeah, that's going to be in our click. Well, I'll, uh, where we set this. So we'll say if this dot handler dot get mouse manager dot middle. So if the middle button is what is being held, then we're going to set the game camera. So get game camera dot set x offset and it's going to be equal to a, the variable that we're going to uh, set in a moment so this dot start drag dot x minus position dot x and this dot game get game camera dot oh sorry we need handler here handler and I'll explain what we're doing here. Dot set y offset is this dot start drag dot y minus position dot y. All right. Okay. So what we need to do is in our click above here, we are going to do that if statement so as long as it's true where's my click all right so to initiate it just on click we're going to set that variable to start out that that start drag so we'll say this uh, above where we call this we'll say if the button clicked btn is equal equal to middle so if that button is equal to middle that we just clicked we're going to say var pose is equal to this dot handler dot get mouse manager dot get mouse position and we can set start drag equal to position now the only thing is we can't just do it like this we actually have to create another object because we're going to do uh, some stuff with that variable so oops pose.x we're going to add to it this dot handler dot handler dot get game camera dot get x offset so why we're doing this is so that when we start, um, we're going to add to the position wherever the current offset is, so that we can, uh, so that we can essentially pick up where the offset left off. So you'll see because obviously though the camera's moving, the actual x and y position of the mouse is not growing. So even though we've scrolled down to the bottom of the map, um, the x position of the mouse and is not increasing anymore. Um, hopefully you understand what I'm saying there. So then we're going to do the same thing with y. y is equal to pose dot y plus this dot handler dot get game camera dot get y offset. All right, so what we're doing is this will only happen on click. So it's not going to continue to update the drag. But right here and get mouse input, we're going to run this every tick. So if we come up to our tick, right under under here, we can say, let's put it above there. This dot get mouse input. So it's just like what we did in the player class with the keyboard, but we're doing it with the mouse, get mouse inputs here. So what this should allow us to do is middle click and then start to drag. And then when we release, it will stop following. Um, let's see what happens now when we've got this going. Get mouse inputs is not a function. Of course it's not because it is get mouse input. This dot get mouse input. Uh, 
Oh, right here is not. Get mouse manager. And get mouse handler dot get mouse manager is not a function. Did we not create that? Let's go to our handler. We did not. So get mouse manager does need to be a function that will return game dot get mouse manager. All right, here we are. So let's see what happens when we middle click. Oh, get y offset is not a function. Get game camera. We need to these little things, man. Go to world. Get game camera. Dot set. Uh, set offset. Set x offset. Set y offset. What is it saying? On line sixty nine. Yes, 69, right there. We need to make this a function. And I'm going to just collapse this down. All right. So we're not having any response. Let's set, let's create this dot start drag and let's see where we're having an issue let's see we'll go here and let's console.log position and I also want to go into our uh, spatial grid in turn off I think I'm console dot logging I'm logging the number of entities now where am I logging that maybe I'm not anymore okay so we can see that we are getting the mouse position here the next thing that we're we're gonna troubleshoot then is see if this dot handler dot get mouse manager dot middle let's log that and see what we have so undefined so when we're clicking we are not getting that uh, that's not popping up so we'll go into our mouse manager ah I know why so if we go back into our game just like we do with the key manager uh, we look at our tick we're ticking the key manager we need to tick the mouse manager as well so we got true and false and we can move now the other thing that we want to do is look we we are we're losing the side of the screen this is definitely not good so we have to run something in these offsets so if we go back into our go back into our uh, game camera where are you it's in graphics game camera what we want to do is when we set the Y offset we also want to check for blank spaces so we'll run that after each one of these so we'll run it after we update the X and after we update the Y so now if I run this we can't go past the screen so there we are we're dragging and we're moving around and that though it took a long time for this this has opened up a lot of stuff that we can start working on and 
I think I'm just going to blow into the next video right after this one, and hopefully I'll get that one released tonight as well. But I'm going to break these down. Um, hopefully you understood it. There was a lot that was happening there. We've created a a mouse manager that works very similar to the key manager. It has uh, a tick function that will update whether a mouse mouse button is continually held down or if it's been released. And it has a click function that we've we've added to every every class down the line that uh, that could take advantage of it. And we are now moving or updating the the uh, the offsets of the camera just by clicking the middle button and dragging. Now if we wanted we could do the same thing with the left or the right. I chose middle because we're going to have some functionality on the left and right buttons. Left will select an entity or we can block select entities. Right will tell them where to go and middle button will drag the mouse around. So we'll do it like that. I will see you guys in the next video where we'll start making him follow the mouse clicks. So we'll click, right click here, right click there, and he will go wherever we tell him to. Uh, and that will be, that will be really awesome because we'll be well on our way to starting uh, the A star pathfinding algorithm so that we can tell him where to go and he will find the best way to get around any obstacles. I will see you guys in that next video.